folks, Joseph A. Sabari here, and I'm doing a movie review this week called Matilda. That's right, which is based on the book by Ron Dell, the same author that gave us Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Fantastic Mr. Fox, James and the Giant Peach, and the Witches, all which have became animated and live action films. Which I know Charlie and the Chocolate Factory has been adapted twice. Yeah. Started out with Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory in 1971, with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory in 2005. Well, anyway, this is, of course, a special edition that came out in 2013 on Blu ray for the very first time. Yep. Which now has an anamorphic widescreen print that's 2.39 the way the movie was shot because unfortunately when this was released on DVD back in 2005 I believe it was only in full frame you know the same transfer that's been on VHS although I believe Laserdisc also had the anamorphic widescreen as well so, but nevertheless this was the first time we get to see this in the right aspect ratio that this movie deserves because it had a lot of details that were missing in the full frame version yeah which is pen scan all the way around and yeah it just it just doesn't have the feel that it that the movie once was when it came out in theaters yeah and I'm glad to see Sony is actually finally getting their acts together when releasing these films on Blu-ray because you know they had the same problem with Annie the 1982 film also had that same treatment you know they always keep releasing it in full frame instead of widescreen and not only that though this edition also includes a new exclusive which has new interviews with the entire cast uh, which is an afternoon tea party that they actually created where you get to see uh, you know producer star and, and director you know Danny DeVito and he knew he wanted to do an adaptation of a popular children's story because he also read this uh, with his kids you know, along with um, his wife yeah it also has everybody along so this was basically a reunion that they did for the afternoon tea party so the entire cast came along well maybe a few people were missing but still <laughs> it was great to see everybody along and it also has all the special features uh, that all came from the 2005 release. So. But it's, this time it's being um, in anamorphic now. I'm just glad this movie came out on Blu-ray. You know, and and I'm glad it looks so much better now. And That was exactly the film it was meant to be. But, uh, yep, I first saw this movie in theaters back in 1996. Um, I actually went to go see that with my, my aunt named uh, Anna. And I, I went to go see this because I thought, why not? I mean, because it's also based on the book. And plus, I love Mara Wilson ever since I saw her in Mrs. Doubtfire. Because, you know, she's always been sweet. So, why not? Yeah. And I like this. It, it was a great movie. Not only that, um, Matilda later went on to become a Broadway musical. Yeah, they adapted it from the Ron Dell story. And they just recently played it at the Amazon Theater in Los Angeles. I haven't seen it though, but it would have been nice to actually watch a musical you know, that's based on, on the story. Which uh, that turn became a movie adaptation, so yeah, it would be nice to see that. So let's, let's get right to the review. It stars Mara Wilson, once again from Mrs. Doubtfire, Danny DeVito, Ray Perlman from Cheers and Beth Davis from Schindler's List and then later Junebug with Amy Adams Pam Ferris Brian Levinston Paul Rubens from Pee Wee's Big Adventure yeah because he played Pee Wee Herman Tracy Walter and John Lovitz it's written by Nicholas Kazan and Robert Saccord and it's produced and directed by Danny DeVito 
who happens to be the star of the film. The movie begins when a very young, smart, and intelligent girl with a bright personality named Matilda Wormwood, who's played by Mara Wilson, who lives with her selfish, nasty, and very crooked parents named Harry and Zinnia, both played by Danny DeVito and Rhea Perlman, along with her older brother, Michael, who's played by Brian Levinson. So since she was born, she's been neglected, ignored, and very mistreated. So by the time she reaches four, she actually discovers a local library in town. And ever since uh, her parents are away, you know, already busy, she wants up uh, reading a lot of books and everywhere she goes. And then later on, her librarian actually gave her a library card, so that means she gets to rent a lot of books to take it home with her anytime you know she ever reads and even at her own room well anyway by the time she reaches six and a half Matilda begins to lose very patience with her parents that also includes uh, Harry's constant lecturing with her so then Matilda decided to use his hair tonic mix in with her mother's hair dye and then by the time Harry actually put it on it turns his entire hair into an unhealthy natural blonde <laughs> which causes him to feel very shocked once he's looked at the mirror <laughs> and he actually screams in horror and and faints like that <laughs> I remember that scene so then Harry decided to take um, all of his kids to his workshop where then we discovered um, Harry's wild scheme by actually taking all these car parts and everything that he actually stole which then Matilda actually accused him for being dishonest which that's what leads to that particular scene this is where he says I'm smart you're dumb I'm big you're little I'm right you're wrong and there's nothing you can do about it yeah cuz Matilda's basically being smart with him so then Matilda decided to come with her own sweet revenge by actually putting super glue on his hat. Which I know by that time they went to a fancy restaurant, you know, and he was about to take off his hat, but unfortunately it got glued stuck into his head. So then Xenia started to actually try to get the hat off his head until suddenly she flew all the way in into the table, you know, showing a black flip on the side then he actually accidentally knocks a raider which suddenly all these uh, sweet tarts were flying all the way around along with the fork and and then <laughs> then that one tart actually went into Matilda's plate along with a fork and it actually sticks into it while the other tart actually fell into uh, Michael's plate and it actually splashed right into him <laughs> so yeah <laughs> That was a very neat uh, practical effect that they used in that scene. Very well done, the way they did it. It's like it did it by magic. So then, after the dinner became a complete disaster, they decided to spend family time while Matilda is just reading a book called Moby Dick, which he got from the library. Yeah. And sadly, Harry actually tore it apart and forces Matilda to watch TV where they were actually watching a game show called The Million Dollar Sticky, which we basically see a contestant, you know, actually already filled up with glue and everything. So then that way, all these uh, millions of dollars are floating around all over his entire body. Yeah, and I know John Lovitz was the host of, of the series. Till suddenly, the TV exploded. So then all of a sudden... A nasty principal by the name of Aphrodite Trunchbill, who's played by Pam Ferris, and who wants up to coming into um, Harry's shop, where they actually had to fix her car. She also, of course, runs a rundown preparatory school called Crunchham Hall, which Harry actually enrolls Matilda there. So then that means she can finally get to see what a school would be like for her where she actually be friends with many friends who actually have been as we speak 
They've been learning about Trunchbull's violent behavior and her nature and, and all of her overly harsh punishments that they gave to the, all the students. Yeah, such as actually locking them inside a, a locker that was filled with needles. Such as that scene with the little girl with pigtails and glasses where she started swinging them, her around and around and around in circles and then threw her off up in the air and at just when she was about to land all the way up to on the side of the, the fence she actually went over the fence and went into the field where she actually grabs all, all these flowers that, that came from the grassy field yeah <laughs> yeah I, I remember that scene too that was really classic so yeah, yeah she actually survived for that because that was really uh, harsh because considering how strong Trunchbull really is because I figure yeah she's been doing this uh, since she, <laughs> she was at the Olympics or so anyway we also get to meet a very young teacher named Jennifer Honey you know, simply Miss Honey who's played by M. Beth Davis and she's the kind of woman who adores her class and takes the admittedly liking to Matilda, especially when they were studying math, and this is when Miss Honey was actually discovered that Matilda actually can um, answers the the actual question of of math, and and she was completely surprised at at her ability to do so. So then she actually talks to Trunchbull and requests for Matilda to move up to a higher class, but of course she refuses. So then Miss Honey decided to pay for Matilda's parents a visit and she requests that they could pay more attention and, and of course to richer. But of course they would never listen while they're just so busy just watching a boxing match and all that. So of course you know how they are. So then we also begin to find out that Matilda had discovered that her family was under an investigation by two FBI agents who are both played by Paul Rubens and Tracy Walter she discovering that you know, her father is going through a lot of illegal dealings which I know her parents refused to believe him. Later on Tr Trunchbull goes to Miss Honey's class for a weekly checkup until she started that same line that Harry actually said in the movie I'm smart, you're dumb, I'm big, you're little, I'm right, you're wrong and there's nothing you could do about it. Yeah, belittling with the students. But then suddenly, an an accidental plan had occurred when when Lavender, who happens to be one of her for friends, as he placed a newt inside Miss Trunchbull's uh, water jug, and then it was going out of control. <laughs> which it turns out that Matilda, as we speak, actually uses telekinesis powers. That's right, because she actually did all that. That's for her discovery whenever she starts getting angry at what Trunchbull is going to come up with next. And, of course, Trunchbull did accuse Matilda for, for what just happened. Because that's what causes this to, to go on. But then, as a result of this, Miss Honey decided to invite Matilda up to her house for tea. Which, which of course they want to passing inside Miss Trunchbull's house, which then we discovered Miss Honey's true secret about all of this. Yeah, I'm not going to give that away. So we'll get to the part where, um, where then you know Matilda's um, decided to focus on her telekinesis powers. Yeah, that's where she started doing all the stuff that she remembers. You know, since her father and. Everybody else has been treating her like crap all this time. and She actually starts to use her powers um, on that one scene where well, she was actually eating a Cheerio. And then she was actually using her powers doing all this other, you know, a lot of wild and crazy things. She started doing up in the air while listening to the music. And wow, I mean, I mean this, this had a lot of great special effects right there. You know, they even though they did mix it in with CGI and all that they really did a lot of good stuff to make this movie possible and I love that 
So then Matilda decided to use her powers by actually trying to get uh, Miss Honey's Dow from um, Trumbull's uh, house. And then that's when she started to uh, traumatize Trumbull uh, all the way around the house. And I know they, you know, <laughs> she started doing a lot of, you know, she's actually torturing her just like that. Trying to fix everything to set things right. Only pretend that this was actually the ghosts of of the father who actually committed suicide. Yeah, because that's where we explain the story. Even after you know Trumbull uh, started to become very suspicious when when she found out what was going on and everything. Then she actually uh, spotted uh, Matilda's red ribbon that she actually found inside her car. And then all of a sudden, that's this is where we get to that particular scene. Is when Matilda decided to use her telekinesis powers by pretending that it might be a ghost that's possessing, <laughs> not to uh, harm everybody and and steal everything that she's been doing. And yes, that's this is where she uses the chalk to write everything down, all these notes, and then <laughs> and then the kids were just uh, saying it out loud, and then. Finally, she uses the, the chalk erasers and actually uh, banging on her. Then she started moving around and went into the globe and she spins her around and around and around and around and flew her out. And Then she started using all these uh, lunch boxes and, and throw it all over at her. And then, and then she escapes and then suddenly all the kids from next door started flowing a lot of lunches at her. <laughs> I know there was a deleted scene, but sadly it's not in the movie, not even on Blu-ray either, and DVD. It was when she actually slips on the banana peel and actually causes her to fly all the way up in the air. You know, which she's, she's already covered with all that lunch uh, all the way around her face. <laughs> and yeah, I'm, I'm surprised they didn't put that scene, because it would have worked so well. Because it's you can only find out in the in the trailer, sadly. So she finally left, and she was never to be seen again. And then the next day, yeah, you know, Matilda decided to stay over with Miss Honey at her house, you know, for tea, until suddenly her parents arrived, and they're about to um, they're about to leave and move to another city. But unfortunately, she doesn't want to leave, so she thought the only best solution behind this use adoption papers which she printed off from the library and have uh, Harry and Zinnia signed up so that way now she could be adopted with Miss Honey yep and things went completely as we speak because now since then you know Miss Honey and, and Matilda has been spending time together like she has her own mother now so yep she's been doing all this stuff ever since and then the movie ends. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a very sweet film. I, I really enjoyed it. You know, I, I like the idea of what was it like when you actually had to transfer a uh, a Ron Dow story into a a dark comedy that's for families everywhere. And so, of course, done by, <laughs> as we speak, Danny DeVito because. DeVito's been known for doing uh, dark comedies, you know, when he started directing them. And I, I know, because he actually did direct it, uh, his first uh, TV movie, um, which was called The Ratings Game. And I know that was with his wife, Rhea. You know, which I know, sadly, you know what happened, you know, over the years. Well, anyway, when Danny and, and Rhea were around at the time, you know, together as as a team, they they used to do a lot of movies and TV shows together. You know, and I I thought they were a great couple. You know, I actually did met uh, Rail Pullman back in 2006 when she was working on a children's book um, during the uh, the Los Angeles uh, Times uh, Book Festival at um, UCLA in Los Angeles, and I definitely remember seeing her uh, along with Eileen. Because I, I remember we took a picture of her from our cell phones. And she was very sweet. We ended up buying the book and have her sign it. So she was very nice. So it was cool. And yeah, we had a good time. But anyway, uh, back to the movie. I actually remember all the moments that they went into. 
they actually put a lot of dark field into it that makes it uh, you know worth a while I mean I, I can see why you know Dahl loves to do something like this and you know, with all of his children's stories because he loves to throw all this stuff in to make it seem you know very uh, scary and unique and all that because you know that's that's kind of how it was when I saw you know and read books like uh, you know, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and and all that because it has that feel. But in this one, I I just never forget the scenes was when uh, Miss Trunchbull offered a fat kid, yeah, one of the students, to actually eat a whole pound of chocolate cake. And that alone was very brutal. You know, even though I love chocolate cake, you know, I always love chocolate. I felt sorry for this kid having to eat the entire cake right in front of the entire students as a punishment. I mean, that, that was just so messed up. Especially when she actually said something about, you know, this whole cake is made with bloody sweat. It, I don't know, that, that kind of grossed me out completely when I saw that scene. Yeah, And at the end, I, I'm glad everything turned out okay for him, because I felt like he was about to vomit after that, and I bet he did too. A lot, a lot of dark scenes that they went into, uh, which I know we've begun to discover uh, Miss Honey's dark secret, was when they went inside uh, Trumbull's uh, house, this is where she started feeling very suspicious. She started, you know, she started running around the entire house, you know, trying to chase them around while Miss Honey and Matilda were hiding from her. Yeah, I know. It's like, wow. <laughs> I remember that, that thumping noise that they went into when I saw this in theaters. It, it was very loud. You know, when she started to jump all the way down to the ground and you know, chasing them and yeah, boy, I mean, she is one tough principal after another. <laughs> yeah. I thought Mara Wilson did a great job, you know, playing a very smart, intelligent girl that we never thought we would see. And this is perhaps one of her best performances. I always loved her in, in Mrs. Doubtfire. I thought she was great in that film, and, and she's she's right up there. You know, she was as good as she could be. We already know the, the fact that Mara Wilson now loves to read books in real life. I mean, she now writes a lot of stories now. I think she writes children's books as well. And she remembers uh, that you know even though she was doing the movie Matilda, that she actually lost her mom you know, while filming this. They actually did dedicate it to her as well, her mother. So it's really sad that this had to happen. Yeah, now, now I can see why. <laughs> But yeah, you know, you know, she's always been this great in, in this movie, and I didn't mind some of the films she's been in later on. Although I wasn't really a, a huge fan of Thomas and the Magic Real World, I was okay with uh, A Simple Wish. Um, that's just me. But I can see why she didn't like some of the films she's been in in the later years. Danny DeVito, along with Ray Perlman, you know, they were both great together as a couple and I thought they were very good in this movie too uh, even though they acted like jerks um, I mean their characters alone also uh, Danny DeVito also did the narration of the film too as well and he's a great narrator focusing on the material that Dahl has ever done yeah and Beth Davis very good as Miss Honey she was a very uh, intelligent teacher that we can trust I mean, you definitely feel sorry for her, for all the pain she's been going through. And you know exactly what she was going to deal with, and kind of glad she did. Yeah, of course, Miss Trunchbull, <laughs> who's played by uh, Pam Ferris, you know, she did a great job. You know, she was very tough, strong, um, nasty, scary. The kind of principal that you just want to stay away. <laughs> Everybody else in the film were good, and I enjoyed it. 
you know, I thought they did a great job, you know, playing the students. You know, they knew exactly what they were going to go for, and they did. They got their revenge on Miss Trumbull, so everything turned out good for the better. <laughs> yeah. It also shows, I mean, what was it like that no matter what happens, you're always going to be, as we speak, a very smart and intelligent person. So you actually get your revenge no matter what happens. So that means you can use your telekinesis powers and do whatever you want just so you don't end up being treated like a person who doesn't exist. And I'm glad Matilda is the one person you could trust. And I just love this movie. So uh, Definitely check this film out if you haven't seen it. Um, I'm sure you're going to have a good time watching this. Um, just be aware the movie is very dark at times, but if you love the the story by Ron Dow, you know you'll definitely love this movie, and that's for sure. So anyway, I give Matilda four and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.